um, so thank you. My pleasure. Um, so we're moving on to our uh, penultimate session, and um, I I le I joined in. Um, I think it was a, 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 a um, it was part of the fitness world. Um, a Zoom session they had, um, which had these different sessions, and it's what inspired me to put this together. And um, and as part of that, there were, uh, there were there was this very interesting session on technology and Zoom, um, and um, which I found really interesting because it was through lockdown. Um, and so I asked um, Stuart here from Sound Dynamics, who I'm going to spotlight now. Here he is, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, good, thank you. So I've asked Stuart to come along and um, troubleshoot any um, sound issues, whether they be in person, whether they be on Zoom things or uh, for hafflers or, you know, whatever you want. And Stuart has said he will try and give you whatever advice and information he can. So um, uh, are, you, are, you, are you going to t tell us anything about sound stuff, Stuart, or are we just going straight what in? Do you want me to yeah, do you want me to just kind of introduce us and what we do? And yeah. yeah. Okay, so my name's Stuart. Um, I'm the director here at Sound Dynamics. Sound Dynamics has been established for oh, 32, 33 years now. And we specialize in supplying sound and lighting um, to health, leisure, fitness, dance, and education. Um, so we don't just supply the systems like a lot of kind of online retailers do nowadays. We we go through specific requirements for every customer to ensure that their system suits what they're doing specifically. So as the lady was just saying, outdoor classes or indoor classes or now online classes or a bit of everything. Um, we work with all the major fitness chains. We do big installs. So we do literally everything from headset microphones to portable sound systems, outdoor systems, big systems, small systems, everything, the whole lot, basically. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, there's been lockdowns over the last 18 months or so, and people have gone from normal face-to-face -face classes to online classes and then back to normal classes and then back to online classes again. So we've been kind of helping the fitness and dance industry and school teachers as well get from doing the normal stuff to getting online and how to teach online and how to get the voice and the music coming through clearly to their online classes. Um, we've helped over, I think it's four, four or 5,000 instructors now throughout the whole of the UK um, to be heard online. Um, so I guess I'm here to help you guys if you want any hints and tips of how to get your classes online or your normal classes face-to-face -face or outdoors. Excellent. So this is where you have to shout out, girls, if you want any um, any advice on anything. So I'll take the spotlight off you, Stuart, so that we can see okay. everybody and we'll have Idea. it as a more interactive. Um, so if you go, go to gallery view, girls, and you can see um, you can see what's going on. Um, so, so, Jane, you said you'd gone outdoors. What equipment did you use outdoors? Well, this is a funny one, because strictly speaking, playing music on the beach in Jersey is illegal. Um, it comes under the parks and gardens and not making a disturbance law. So um, I had to try and play it safe. I mean, people flout it all the time, to be honest, but at the same time, you don't want anybody <laughs> kind of coming along a messy. So um, I just used my little portable speaker and we found a quiet part of the beach where um, it wasn't overlooked. So we're going to not disturb anybody. Um, who's around but obviously that created challenges of being able to hear particularly if it was a high tide week and the tide was coming you'd be amazed how noisy the sea is yeah. um so so yes it wasn't ideal um so i i mean also for ease of access and wouldn't be lugging something huge down there either 
Um, so if you've got any recommendations for a portable speaker that's really can throw out a fair bit of sound in a wide open space. But, so are, are, you, are you talking, Jane, about teaching a normal face-to-face -face class outdoors on a beach? Yes, it's not a huge right. class, so we can we can occupy a fairly um, small space. Right. And we try and okay. go somewhere sheltered as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, we do various small systems which come with or can come with a headset microphone included. So, again, they can be rechargeable for outdoor use and you can carry them down to the beach and you can pop your headset on. And when you speak through your headset, your voice will automatically come through your speaker so that your class can hear you nicely. And you, it gives you full control over your voice and the music as well. So if if the sea is making a lot of noise or you've got background noise from various places, you can just turn your voice up nicely so that when you speak normally, your voice comes across the music nice and clearly and everyone can hear the music and everyone can hear your voice perfectly. That would um, be good because as soon as I turned my back on people to demonstrate something, they often couldn't hear. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And this this has been the same with the online classes as well. So people have been setting up in front of their laptop and then the minute they kind of stand back away from it, they're trying to expect their tiny microphone in their laptop to pick them up from three, four metres away in their living room whilst jumping around doing a fitness class or a dance class with the music playing and everything you know it's picking up the feet of your the feet on the floor and the background noise and if a dog barks or if someone knocks on the door so it's just picking up everything so with a headset and a few little gadgets um, you can do an online class where the people on zoom for example are hearing just your voice like you're talking directly to them and the music as well without all the background interference you're talking and playing your music and they're hearing it almost crystal clear in their living room. Thank you. What, what's the name of this system or what, what would, if I wanted to look on the website and find all the bits, what would I look for? Well, there's, I mean, there's various portable systems, but there's one called a QR8. If you go onto our website, QR8PA, and then we do a bigger one called a QR10PA, and then a bigger one and a bigger one. Um, but maybe the best thing for me to do is if I leave an email address, um, I can give you all an email address now if you want to make a note of it. I'll give you the generic one and then myself and other staff members answer. So it's orders at sound-dynamics.co.uk. And if you want to drop us an email, and tell us what you do and what you're trying to accomplish. We can then ask you a few questions and then send you a link to kind of the perfect system for you. Obviously, give us a call at the office as well. You can message me on Facebook if people are on Facebook. But I suppose this is what I was saying at the very beginning. We can go through your specific requirements, whether you've got five people in a class or 25 or 55. We can choose the system for you and send you a link to it and you can have a look at it. Can I just say, I wish I'd known about you 18 months ago. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 um, yeah. I went from two classes a week pre-pandemic uh, to five on Zoom a week. Right. Um, and it was very much a trial and error um, with a, a speaker and uh, getting the independent headphones. And I did a lot of research on YouTube. I've come up with a system now that works because I've, I've learned how to bypass, um, you know, through the PC. So the music's playing for the Zoom people. But yeah, yeah it's um, it's been a learning curve. So how are you playing your music then, Wendy? Um, I use my tablet connected, which is uh, goes through my speaker and the headset. I bought uh, one of these little, um, oh, what do you call it? Things you plug it all in. A mixer. Oh, like a, little, a mixer, like that's a little the mixer. word. Yeah. Hopeless, Brilliant. yeah. A, a mixer, yeah. And I've got a headset because I found yeah. the lapel mic isn't, isn't that effective. That's right. 
yeah because it's all right if you've got a business suit and it's up here but when you've got a t-shirt on and you're teaching it's sort of a bit further down your body so it doesn't exactly. pick up quite so well yeah yeah well with that mixer that you're talking around about we we do a tiny little mixer i don't know if you can see that yeah same size yeah size it's got kind of five controls on it um yeah and you plug in your mic you can plug in a speaker so that you can hear everything your end you can plug in your phone for the music and you just turn your voice up as you know turn your music up to suit and then your zoom class can hear everything their end and you can hear everything your end through your little speaker and the mix is about 50 quid and then you need a couple of cables basically yeah um but not only again like i said not only do we supply it but we can sit and go through all your settings on Zoom, on your laptop, with your microphone. It takes about 15 minutes maybe, and we can get everything perfectly balanced and everything sorted out for you. So there's a, there's a question in the chat from Heather. Has anybody done a combination of Zoom and in-person teaching? Uh, yes, um, I do two, three classes like that. Um, uh, and and I was, uh, yes, so the whole Zoom thing, um, I, I think I chose in my, in my private ones, I don't use a microphone. I choose to stop and talk and then, and then play the music just because I find the microphone like gets in the way really. Um, so I don't think it's the perfect way. And, and I keep, and actually I thought after today, Stuart, I might, I might be re-inspired to use a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but um, so could you just uh, the the setup then so what I do is I have a speaker and I have a, a laptop and I have a, a, a television huge television monitor to show the people on zoom on so yeah. I I'm just trying to think where where I link up I go from my Mac to my television yeah and my television headphone socket through to my speaker. Right. And I share the sound to the Zoom girls so they get yeah. it via the speak, you know, directly via the computer and the and the sound in the room plays through my speaker. Yeah. So that that's a good way of doing it, but the problem with that usually um not not for everyone but usually is that they can't hear your voice very well so it's almost like they can hear the music so well now that they can't hear you anymore yeah um so there's two ways of doing getting over that is we do like a special little cable that attaches your microphone system if you've got a headset mic it attaches the little receiver box into your laptop so that when you speak they hear your voice rather than just it trying to pick you up in the background again um, or the other option is again the little mixer um, which does the same job it's kind of a link between your microphone system and your zoom class but the advantage of the microphone is that it's got physical controls on it so you can you've got more control you can change the tone of your voice and turn it up and turn it down where the cable is a little, there's no control on the cable, if you know what I mean. Okay. All right. I'll have a think about that one. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, Anna, have you tried doing um, Zoom and live classes combined as well? How? Um, I, I have, but I've not been quite as sophisticated as everyone else. <coughs> Excuse me. I just use my mobile phone um, and that actually works for us. Um, I put it on a tripod and I zoom in. And what I like about that is it's really flexible. I can pick it up and move it around um, really quickly in the class. So I find it quite interactive. Um, so it's not the technically best way of doing it, but people say that they're really enjoying it and they really like the, the, the that interaction and being able to get like a real sort of close up view on something. So, and so how do you see them, Anna? Just, I've only got four people, okay. so I've just got it on the four view. So it is small, but I kind of, 
I go, I still just, I go up to it and I can still see them and I still give them feedback. And I'm really surprised at how much I can see. I didn't think it would work, but I thought, well, I'll just try it because I haven't got all this kit and I can't really afford it. So we'll try this and see what happens. And it's been okay and people are coming back. Um, okay, <laughs> um, but I would, I I am now thinking that now I've trialed that, that I think it would be worth in, investing in getting something that that does share the sound because I, 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 I'm I just conscious that the sound, that music isn't particularly good. Um, so I think what's, what, 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 what Stuart and you just described are, are really good systems. It sounds really good. Yeah, lovely. So just, um, just on that point, Anna, is the little mixer, just so you know, the little mixer that I showed you, this one, that can link to your phone so that, again, you could wear a headset and have the little mixer to one side of your phone. And when you speak into the headset, they will hear your voice much more clearly than you kind of just stood back, kind of talking to them in the background, if you know what I mean. Um, and then we do a, a slightly more, I suppose it's slightly more expensive, but a system called a Blink microphone, which connects directly into your phone without a mixer, which will do the same job as well. So you've you've kind of it sounds like you've jumped you've actually you're not backwards with the technology you've jumped past laptops and everything straight onto your phone which is great and now there's a way to link microphones and mixers actually to your phone you just need a special little cable ah oh, right i'd be really interested in that um I missed your email address. Could you type it in the chat at the end, please? Yeah, yeah I'll, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it comes out to yeah. everybody as well, Anna. Because I did start off, I did take my laptop initially, um, but then I was getting into this situation of where do I have the laptop? Because I wanted the camera that it just saw me and not the students. So that means I have to have it the camera in front of me it's complicated isn't it <laughs> whereas if I've got something bigger like a laptop then that's intrusive in the class for the people who are in the room so I tried putting it behind me but then I didn't know who I was presenting to but but I see that to Anna as like um it makes them feel more as being part of it in the class but the issue that it, what if they can see the students yes yes yeah all yeah. In group, yeah yeah um yeah and when i've got my got them on my tripod i pick it up and i turn it around and we say hello and we kind of we interact in that way but if i've got the laptop behind me with the camera behind me and i'm presenting to the class then they're seeing my back view when actually what I'm teaching is I'm showing something at the front and then if I turn around to the students on Zoom then so do you see what I mean I've then got this issue of so how do you manage that or have you you've got two cameras haven't you no 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 no, no just do one um uh I, I there's there's nothing wrong with doing it both ways you know doing it once facing them and then once yeah facing the other because everybody can practice it twice that way yeah you know what i mean so um i don't think it does any harm um i think yeah. you're i think i think you're right but i think it's about me <laughs> being my style <laughs> i haven't got the patience always to do it twice okay. and i do it and i can't quite remember what like exactly what i've done so it's <laughs> it's for yeah. me it works better to do it to everybody at the same time yeah. and 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 that sort of so, that seems so the... for us Okay, so the, the, the dance studio I teach at, they have their camera um, uh, uh, like a, across the other side of the room from me with the students in between me and the yes. camera. See, so, so they are seeing what your students yes, see. Yes. Yes, so they are, and that's what I want to recreate. Okay. And so, whereas if I did it the other way, they okay, were doing so. it with the two styles. So yeah. which do you prefer, your your, oh, I do, your studio I, setup with, or, or in terms of, I, I no, don't, I think, in terms I, of technically, I, which, or. Well, I actually feel mind. a bit closer to. It's just different ways of doing it. And you've just got, to, you've got to play with it. 
and we'll find your setup. This is like Wendy, you spent ages playing playing with it and getting your setup right and trying lots. And you've got what works for you and it works yeah. for your students. And I've got something that works, but it's not great. But Stuart's just let me know that actually, <laughs> technically I can set up your camera here, stand there, yeah. face this way, plug this into that. And there, there just isn't. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like Wendy. Wendy said, "If only we'd have, we'd have known about Stuart, you and your." And, and getting rid of that background noise. So the, the major problem is that the, you've set everything up with your laptop. You're standing right next to it. It sounds absolutely fine. The minute you then step away from it, so it picks you up and you can do your class. It's picking up everything. It's picking up the sweat as you move around. Two sticks. It's so you get in this swishy noise around the room and they're struggling to hear your voice and the music clearly because you've got everything going off all at the same time. The minute you then put that headset on, it gets rid of all that background noise. It's picking your voice up from your mouth, which is an inch away from the headset. So they're, they're hearing your voice perfectly then. But it's that it's accepting that you might have to spend 50 quid on a mixer, 100 quid on a mic if you haven't already got one and patience and time to get it right uh, which we can help you with like i said but um yeah that's the main the, the phone call we always get is that it's picking it sounds terrible swishing about sounds like i'm underwater they're all common phrases that this background noise is just swelling about in your class Stuart, can I just ask, do you know, would it be possible for me to plug my phone into a monitor if I did have more students coming and I needed to see a better view? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. You would, you would probably need an adapter um, of some kind that, that goes from your phone to maybe a HDMI socket on a monitor whilst at the same time you wanting to plug maybe a microphone or various things into your phone at the same time so yes we do a, a, an adapter or a few different adapters that allow you to link various things from into your phone and then from your phone at the same time because i think Kay, you were you were looking for a monitor at one time because i mean that is something i've thought about um yeah. i might go back to the laptop possibly and get a monitor so has anybody got any ideas of, of what are the lightweight, portable Mine's just a <laughs> great television, a great big old television. Of yeah. Mine. <laughs> but is there anything, is there any kind of lightweight monitors you could recommend, Stuart? Not, not as in a brand or a make or a model or whatever, but yeah, a, a normal computer monitor with a HDMI input. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of like Kay was saying about using a telly, you know, it's, you, there's lots of things you can use that instructors have already got and they don't actually realize that, you know, they've already got the headset mic, but they didn't know they could attach it to their laptop because they hadn't got the mixer or they didn't know about the little mixer um, or the special little cable we do. And so you, you can use a monitor or you can use a television. Um, it doesn't really matter what make or model as long as it's got the relevant input to connect um, and your phone or your laptop has got the relevant input output as well but again we can go through all that with you you kind of tell us what you've got and what you would like to do and then we can say right this is how you do it i've bought a large monitor for my dancing room which is fine when i've got the laptop connected to it but i can't actually get my tablet to connect to it um, I think I'm going to need some kind of adapter to uh, to do that. So just bear that in mind when you think about trying to connect a, a phone to a monitor. I don't know. What yeah, I'm definitely. Doing. You need the adapter. Deb. Yeah. 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 So and I had to buy an, an adapter for um, to plug into my laptop, which had, as Stuart said, an HDMI connector to it. So that plugs in and then I have an HDMI lead that plugs into the adapter and the television. And that's how you get the signal through from the um, laptop to the television. I think this has been. Yeah, I think this is.
This has been yeah. a really good yeah. session to re-inspire, like you were saying, hey, just to re-inspire revisiting our tech because I think we were we all just we were on such a steep learning curve and we all kind of got it to a point where we could kind of sort of muddle along and and I think now is actually it is a good time to just kind of now we've got more comfortable with that just actually go back and tweak it a bit so this has been been a really good session so thank you very much I think, I think the thing is go on sorry sorry be good if we had some um yeah just some kind of resources of hints and tips uh because I've I've been in one where somebody's been playing the music on their laptop but just playing it on their laptop not through the laptop so whenever yep. she was talking and giving instructions on what movements we were doing then the sound diverted to her and then we couldn't hear the music which was fine when she was doing drills because you just go out well, i just carry on doing hip hits and i just carry on doing that until she stops and the music comes back when you're doing a choreography it just all goes horribly wrong yeah so yeah, yeah. a list of things like that somewhere would be really useful yeah we've got we've got like an email that we send out with like a setup guide and we're we're all over facebook kind of explaining various things um, um there's also a few little controls and a little a few little tweaks on zoom that kind of stop various things happening as well um there's i think there's one that says suppress background noise and it 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 sets the default the default setting is auto which causes a major problem it needs to be on low all the time um people again say every time i speak through the headset the music stops and then the music comes back and then my voice disappears and that's because you've got the zoom setting on auto so it's it's thinking because zoom is a meeting group platform it thinks that you're having a conversation with the music so it's basically saying, right, you be quiet whilst the music's talking, and then music, you be quiet while Debbie's talking, and and then you're going, what's happening here? Every time I speak, the music's stopping, and then the music comes back, and then they can't hear me. So again, we can go through literally every little thing, Zoom, laptop, mixer, headset, settings, what you want, what you need, the whole lot. Brilliant. Um, so what's what's the website? And I'll type it in the chat, Stuart. So the, the web the web address. Yeah. Um, so the website is www.sound dynamics.co.uk. And the probably the best generic yep. email address is orders at yep and then sound-dynamics.co.uk there we go there you go girls do you want my telephone do you want the office number as well uh, go on yes yeah. so it's 01773 there we go you're all equipped to get in touch with Stuart and his crew. <laughs> so any other questions, anybody? Yeah, Do you advise I... on cameras? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Go um, on, cameras. Cameras, um, the, the two most popular ones, or the, the, the very most popular one um, is a webcam. I'm using it now. It's $21.99. Um, again, we've supplied 500 of them um the one of the lowest price ones but they're one of the best all the features they've got the same features on of pretty much every camera until you get up to around about 200 quid so if you want a, an amazing one like a brio <laughs> we do the brio which is kind of 200 pounds but anything in between that yeah. most people have gone for the 22 pound one because it's got it's just brilliant um yeah so webcams 22 quid miss the rest out or go for a really good one okay thank you could i just ask please i've got a big independent rechargeable kick-ass speaker and mm -hmm. it won't recharge anymore is it worth having the battery replaced in it or not it depends if it's old then probably not and 
a lot of rechargeable systems, they have to come back to us for us to change the battery, which right. we're quite happy to look at for you. And we can okay. probably give you an estimate if you let us know what I, I, is the brand. I don't think the brand's kick ass, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you let us know, if yeah, you let us know what, what the is. brand is. No, let us know if what, you want to let us know. What would you as old? What would you determine as old? I would say nowadays two, three years old because some of the yeah, speakers okay. that we supply now are, I won't say cheap, but they're low cost and sometimes it's just easier to replace the speaker. No, that's fine. I'll probably leave it then because I think it's it's possibly about five years old, but it's one of these with a, you know, like a suitcase wheels and a handle yeah. that I can take out in the field. But yeah. it just needs to be permanently plugged in, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, any questions? You know, Kate, just going back quickly to the hybrid classes. Yep. Um, the setup is usually exactly the same as teaching in your house. Um, the only difference is usually with the mixer anyway, when you use the mixer, the only difference is the speaker. In your house, obviously, you might only need a very small speaker. Um, and in a big class, you're going to need a big speaker. So the setup is exactly the same, but you would just unplug your small speaker, go to the class, plug a bigger one in. And the mixer also gives you the control over the volume coming out of the speaker compared with what's going out to the class members as well. So you can turn it up for the class and down in your bedroom or up for the class and up in your studio. So again, the mixer gives you that full control over everything. Yeah. Okay. Do you know, um, I don't know how anybody else is, but it's just, it was like Hannah said, we've just all had this, it's all just hitters and um, we've, we've found ways to like bumble along a bit, you know, but, uh, but yes, there's, I, I need to do it in in stages me I can take so much technology and then I, then I'm ready for another another bit you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think also at the outset nobody knew how long this situation was going to last yeah. so yeah. why spend a lot of money when you don't know how long it's for but I think now online and hybrid classes are here to stay whatever happens with Covid so it's yeah. probably now is a good time to start thinking about upgrading and really investing in something because you likelihood is you'll be using it for a long time i think yeah, yeah. That's the way things are and, and not only the equipment it's like you were saying earlier jane it's getting it's changing your teaching methods to suit those hybrid classes so again we've had people go well how can i teach when i'm trying to teach to that class and then i'm trying to teach to that class at the same time and it's it's kind of getting that set up right so your phone or your laptop is kind of to one side of you a little bit and your class at the other side a little bit and then it's that interaction between going to your class members and keeping them motivated and interested and then going to your laptop and keeping your online class motivated as well and it's it's just that different style of teaching and we've all had to learn to adapt to it so um so that that's been brilliant Stuart I think uh, would you say girls you've all got a lot out of that yeah Thank you very much. You. And, um, and and I've no doubt some of us will be in touch with you shortly. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Give me a call or send me an email. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you Stuart. Bye. 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 So, ladies, um, uh, this has been our first, uh, you know, go at uh, doing this networking event. Um, and it, it was it has been financed by monies that the JTA had left over when um, for those that were part of the JTA. Um, and when it dissolved, there was some money left in the bank. and We wanted to do something that would help teachers, you know, um, all teachers, not just um, not just a few. So so these so we're going to. Well, depending on your feedback about how you found this morning, um, the the idea is to do them maybe every three months, something like that. Um, and I, I've already started thinking about, you know, what we can have in the next one that would be useful. But if you have requests, um, suggestions, then um, either pop them in the chat or drop me an email, you know, about it. Um, my 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 thought was a bit like this whole online thing, you know, social media. 
and there i don't know if you've seen on social media there's been the is it the social shimmy that um uh has been led by i can't remember her name american lady um Zaha. Katie that's Zaha. it yes yeah, so she's she's going to join us to talk about um instagram and um you know um making effective use of it um, and just social media generally you know um at the next one because i thought that would be very again current and useful for for us so um yeah any other requests um yes yeah b that's right she is so oh annalise she's got a question for dorte go for it annalise unmute yourself okay thank you Kay. dorte i have a question for you uh, regarding the music we talked about um, so in my classes I uh, for my music I use Spotify um, but because you were I was looked uh, I already looked it up apparently I can't use it <laughs> because okay. it's like yeah I, I mean, I don't have any experience of using Spotify. Well, I use Spotify for my own purposes. I don't tend to use it for my classes. Um, so I, I wouldn't know. I, I have come across um, it being used in, in like, um, uh, in other setups at, as events. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't know. If it says in the TNCs that you can use it, then yeah it. it's like you can use it only uh, for private so you cannot uh the, the public um may not hear it so it was like for me it was like really handy because it's like spotify you just look the number up up you you put it in the speaker and it's okay i don't have to uh need a cd or anything like that so what are you using in classes is it still cds you you are using or so so I, I make my own I make my own playlist. I don't actually use CDs, but I, I uh, compile it as a playlist. So I purchase digital music and create my own playlist from that and play it off a device. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so what are um, you doing, Kay? Yes, I, I'm the same. I I have a music library, um, you know, I use iTunes and I have a music library there and I buy and import music onto that as I as I get new music and then I create a playlist that I use for, for different things you know so I create okay. different playlists depending on the subject matter I am teaching so yeah okay. but I'm, I'm interested to hear that Annalise because I would have thought that even if if you use Spotify as long as you were paying for your PRS PPL you know then then that's the license that gets you the, you know, is, is paying royalties. So I wouldn't have thought it mattered whether you use Spotify or, uh, no? What, what, yeah, what? I was from the same idea. I also have a, uh, an account on Spotify, so I already paid for that as well. So okay. it was like, okay, so I, I pay for Spotify, then I pay my, here in, in Belgium, it's called different, it's called Sabam, mm -hmm. but it's the same. So you paid there also as well. So it was like, yeah, but apparently I, I may not use it. Sorry, um, Katerina, did you have something you want to say? I just wanted to add to that because um, I've been using Spotify and I had no idea. Um, and I like you, I have I pay for my um, subscrip Spotify subscription. When I was using it, I've also had a music license. Um, so that's news for me, but I also discovered another issue, and that is that music goes on to Spotify and also comes off it. So you can have a playlist with 10 songs and then go in one day and find that two have disappeared. Um, and then in another two or three years, they come back again. So you don't have full control of what's in your playlists, um, which was very frustrating. Um, so it's interesting to hear how everybody else does it because I, I wouldn't want to lug CDs around. Um, mm. So yeah, iTunes, I use Google Music. That, that's how I purchase my, my music when I'm buying digital music. Um, I don't know how that compares to iTunes. 
I don't know. I mean, I know some people um, really don't like iTunes. Um, I think I it's just what I've always used and I'm really bad at changing things. So if whilst ever it works for me, I'll just stick with it, you know. Um, uh, I think the, there have been issues with iTunes of things. Um, yeah, if, if you have to change equipment, trying to move your iTunes with you or, or you know, like have an iPod, if if I, that needs updating or, or get another piece of equipment, I don't know. Anyway, but generally speaking, it works for me, but I, I don't know about other systems. So, yeah, I, I think that they all have issues. <laughs> you just find the one that works best for you. <laughs> Thank you. So anybody else, anything that they would like to um, ask, uh, you know, ask to ask the group about um, any any issues, burning issues that you've had either in classes or or about the, you know, teaching itself or or anything that you would like to, um, uh, you know, sort of sound the group out about. No, excellent. I, I just put in the uh, the chat that <clears throat> maybe for the next one, some advice on organising um, COVID secure hafflers. And I've seen a couple of people have organised live events and then cancelled them more recently. And I'm not sure if that's um, whether they've had problems or whether people are just not quite ready and not feeling secure enough to go mm -hmm. through them yet. Okay, I'm I'm interested because I've got um, uh, our first in person hafler coming up on the. 6th of November and um, ticket sales are going slowly, slowly. Um, and I think I've just resigned myself to the fact that we might just get 20 or we might get, uh, you know, normally I'd have a hundred at, at one of these pre COVID, you know, but um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I'm not quite sure how ready people are to come back. Um, well, I'm and... trying to organise a, a halflet for um, just a few selected groups, not not so much as a halflet, but just as an opportunity for people to yeah. get together and perform in front of live people again, because, yeah. you know, none of us has performed in front of an actual audience for 18 months, and I'm guessing we're all going to feel a bit rusty. Yeah. Now. So I did, I'll come in a minute, Sarah. Um, I did a, an afternoon thing one Sunday afternoon at, at a, the local church hall, and we only had about, I didn't need to limit numbers because there weren't enough to, to, to limit. I think there were about 25 people there. And, you know, I spread the chairs out um, around tables. We had lots of hand sanitizer around. We had the doors open, so there was lots of ventilation. And, um, and, and, and actually, my, as people arrived, we said, it's just one rule, no hugging because some, pe you, some people were ready to hug, but others weren't, and you don't want anybody to feel awkward about it. No hugging and just respect people's need for a little bit of distance, but you know, enjoy, enjoy seeing everybody again. And, um, I, and, and it, it, it went fine. Um, Sarah, you wanted to say something. I was going to say that actually, um, I've decided to start doing a half -low, um at the end of October. Um, and I've spoken to the venue um, and basically um, they don't have any limitations at all with regards to numbers, um, which I'm not overly happy with. So I decided um, that I would limit the numbers um, to allow half of what yeah. the, you know, the venue was saying they could have in that room. Um, <clears throat> and I've also... I mean, tickets are selling, they are slow. Um, but the reason for me telling you this is that, you know, I think as long as you're clear in what you're planning on doing. So for instance, how am I going to keep people safe? Um, Cause what I'm also going to do is I've said, you know, tickets have to be bought in advance. I don't want anyone turning up on the door unexpectedly. Um, you know, I'll sit people in the groups in which they're coming with um so that they're together um and i've requested that everyone be double jabbed although all right policing that i'm not going to do but you know as long i think as long as you're clear um as an organizer then that allows people to make their decision whether they're going to come or not yeah um and it, it's tricky i know it is um but i think that's important you know as an yeah. organizer okay thank you sarah that's great. and I, I think even possibly 
advertising that it's restricted numbers, I think, yes. is probably a big encouragement for people. Yes. Um, in, in terms of, we know some places have just opened up completely back to normal, and I don't feel comfortable going to all of those places, but yeah, it's making it visible, I think, you're right, Sarah. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Wendy? I've got a half booked at the end of November, um, but it's a closed book. It's invite only. Um, it's actually our 10th birthday as well as a troop. Um, and our Hafler rules here in Wales, is, you know, the, the COVID rules here in Wales are slightly different. Um, <clears throat> so I think the hall seats 100. So I've restricted the numbers right down. They'll be given their own table. As Sarah was saying, it's ticket only. I never, ever do tickets on the door anyway, to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, I've never had a problem selling tickets before. Um, so we just do a list. Um, everything's provided at the unit. And I've got a very big hall as well, which is lovely. And we've got doors which will open out onto the playing fields outside. So um, fingers crossed it's all going to go very well. Um, it's OK at the moment. I've got a few people interested. And if nobody else comes, well, we'll just dance with those people that have agreed yeah. to come that want to come. Yeah, yeah I think mine, mine is just going to be um, selected local groups that have danced with us before and yeah. we have put on hafflers and, and workshops that we've been to with yeah. the thought that this is essentially just a kind of practice with a few extra people and okay. we'll do something proper next year. Yeah. yeah, I think we we just need to start having live things again, um, to so people can dip the toes in and, and remind yeah. themselves of of what fun it can be to get together that, and to reconnect that, with each other, and um, yeah, you know that was my that. thinking because I think performing is just like it, it's just like another muscle and we haven't used it properly. Yeah, even dancing in front of a camera for other people on Zoom is just not the same. It's not the same. No, no. <laughs> Lovely. Well, thank you, girls. That was really useful input, everybody. Um, uh, does anybody else have any anything they would like to sound the group out about? I just got one. Sorry, touching on on what we've been saying about um, hafflers. If it's not just a matter of lack of confidence over COVID, but just lack of confidence generally, because we haven't been performing and we haven't been together, and maybe we're in lockdown and we've piled on the pounds and no, no costume fits anymore. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just wondering about if there's uh, mileage in and in, in kind of a kind of a talk about getting back on the wagon so that's the wrong metaphor i'm sorry but, you know, <laughs> get, get, you know, getting back into performing and getting your performing confidence back up as much as anything else yeah okay lovely i shall make a note of that thank you can i just ask a really quick question um because obviously I've, I've come back to an in-venue class I've had my doors and my windows open. It's getting a bit nippy now in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> it was fine in the summer. Has anyone had any thoughts about how they're going to keep that ventilation going, you know, once it starts to get really cold? So, um, I've... Uh, I'll, just, I'll just... Jan, I'm just on a Zoom call. I'll call you back. <laughs> my sister um so yes i agree anna and i think i last uh, last week i i compromised by closing one door and leaving the other door open <laughs> so to get a, a sort of half ventilation you know um but i'm just yeah i think yeah maybe you have to just gauge each group um because it's what your students comfort level is rather than what yours is um so so i i still have um certainly one of the girls in class still wears a mask because she's she's not quite ready yet you know none of the other girls do um but 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 somebody else stays by the door because they they're really cautious and want the ventilation um so yeah i think you just have to where is it my one at dance city the girls all there just seem to seem to have like forgotten about COVID and they're just up for having a party every week, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so, so yeah, I think each group is different and you have to, you have to just 
gauge their comfort levels and see what what you can do but everyone's just planning to just keep the keep the windows open keep the doors open like people just have to accept it's going to be a little bit colder and then once you warm up yeah, at, okay. at, the, at, at the moment, yes, yeah. but that, that may change as it gets colder. Even the colder, get yeah. Colder, you know, so yeah, because I'm just wondering where we stand then. When it gets really cold, you know, in, if people start shutting the windows, what do, do more vigorous classes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, do we as teachers have to insist that? windows well, well, stay and doors stay i don't quite know what the rules on the well, ventilation are the, the, i think the 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 it's back to normal really is okay the, is the state of play now and right. it's, we are doing that for our students to feel more comfortable rather than it being a legal thing now okay 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 it's, it's, so, it's not yeah. it's not a, a legal thing we sh should in theory still sort of be risk assessing our environment I've not started back teaching yet, but I'm due to, and the room doesn't really have any options for increasing ventilation. So I've just made the decision I'm going to have to limit numbers just to make sure yeah. that, because, yeah, that, that, that there's not going to be that option there. So it's considering it overall, really, um, so that you can adapt for those different circumstances to what to what you need, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 I think it's, I think the most important thing is being clear with your students what they're going to expect because it, as Kay says it's not a legal requirement the only thing that could come back on you is in a negligence claim if you're jamming in 50 people into a room yeah. and doing all, all that kind of thing it, it, it's it's the students who might have an issue with you so that's what you need to make sure that they you've got their buy-in yeah yeah and I think and I've, I've still li limited the numbers um and I'm still open so I'm kind I'm feeling like I'm in a little bit of a halfway house because I'm I, I, I kind of know I don't have to do it but I'm still kind of doing it and I suppose I'm just thinking ahead a little bit but I think that's a really good point Claire thank you as long as I'm clear what I'm doing then if the students you know if they know the way the doors might close it, but the numbers are limited and they don't want to come that's their choice yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so I, I i agree claire and in my private class that i teach i had limited numbers and they had to sign up for the term as well as the open windows the ones i teach at dan city they control the numbers and the and the studios are quite well ventilated anyway so yeah anybody else I, I, it's been it's been a really useful interesting morning is um my um my feeling on it anyway so um i'll yeah thumbs up thank you very much girls um so uh nearly lunchtime <laughs> excellent and i've got to ring my sister back so <laughs> um so lovely it's been really nice to see you all thank you so much for joining us and i'll look at doing another one um in about three months and um and and maybe uh put i'll put an email out there just to ask you if there is a bit nearer the time if there's something that's particularly relevant that we would like to have um one of the sessions on so yeah as it, did you find i know daughter the length of the session for the for the people speakers was quite difficult sometimes to get all the information in but did you find them a good length girls and or would you like them longer to get more information in or was it right for what we did but i, I will not make it any longer no oh, okay I think, yeah yeah i, I think agree. it will be too long then yeah okay that's great no that, that, that my feeling was you know a few subjects um key points about them and then makes gives us something to think about and and actually there's always the people to contact after for follow-on things if you want so great thank you for your feedback in the chat girls that's lovely okay so um so let's call it a day then and um uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend everybody i'll see some of you tomorrow for the turkish music talk and and uh, workshop and um thank you all for joining us see thank you, you so much, thank you thank you bye bye bye, bye. bye.